Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. S. Gayatri, Assistant Professor of Commerce, the Standard Fire X Rajatnam College for Women's Varasi. Today, we have to see that collection of data and its methods. First, we know the data. Yes, data are the foundation for statistical analysis. So, the planning and organizing of statistical survey is essential one. The required information or the data in a study may be obtained either through a survey or an experiment basis. Here, there are two sources of data. One is a primary data and another one is a secondary data. In that primary data, collected first hand by the investigator concerned. Next, methods of collecting primary data. Yes, there are five methods of collecting primary data. One is direct personal interview and second one is indirect oral interview. Third one is information through correspondence and fourth one is mailed questionnaire. Fifth one is scheduled send through enumerators. Let us see one by one. First one, direct personal interview. In this method, the investigator meets the concerned persons directly and collect the required data from them. If a person wants to study the spending habits of the students of a university, he may go to the university, contact the students and obtain the desired data. As the investigator is present on the spot, the data collected by him would be first hand and original in character. So, in, in this method, the direct personal interview, uh, the main advantages is the investigator meets the respondents in person. The response is more encouraging and also the data obtained are more accurate and reliable, reliable one. The investigator can also collect supplementary information about the personal characteristics through the observation. Uh, then personal contact and thus misinterpretation if any on the part of the informant can be avoided. Uh, the language of communication can be adopted according to the educational level of the informants. So some of the disadvantages in direct personal interview. Uh, in this method is uh, unsuitable when the scope of inquiry is very wide. And also this method is not suitable for the biased information. This method is very expensive and time consuming and the small institution cannot employ this method. Next, indirect oral interview. Indirect oral interview means the investigator contacts the third party instead of contacting the concerned persons directly. This method is generally adapted by inquiry committees or commissions appointed by the government and also the police departments. In some of the advantages are uh, wide scope of inquiry and economy of time and money, uh, the reliable data uh, from more number of persons, it is a simple and convenient method of collecting the data then adequate information to be collected to the respondents and also some of the limitations are time consuming personal bias need not be reliable data that is the poor training of the investigator will affect the nature of the work next one information through information from correspondents under this method, the investigator appoints local agents or correspondents in different places. They collect the information and supply it to the head office. This method is adapted by newspapers and also some government departments. For example, the wholesale price index numbers are constructed by getting regular information from different correspondents appointed in different areas. This method is more suitable in the case of crop estimations. The merits are coverage of wide area, second one economy of time and money and third one more speed. Fourth one mailed questionnaire. 
under this method a questioner is prepared and sent by post to various informants the questioner contains questions pertaining to the enquiry the respondents are required to answer the questions and return the questioner within a specified date some of the merits are extensive survey economy of time and money reliability of data and also the collection of confidential data the limitations are it is not suitable for illiterate people then poor response no supplementary data need not be reliable data last one schedule send through enumerators instead of sending the questioner through post the trained enumerators take the questioner themselves contact the informants get replies and fill them in their own handwriting thus when the questioner is filled by the enumerator it is known as schedule in the case of questioner method the questioner is sent to the informants by post but in case of schedule the enumerator carry the schedule personally to the informants and uh, fit by the by himself in merits of uh, schedule sent through enumerators are it is suitable method for illiterate people then more responses and more encouraging the people accuracy of data is reliable one then the limitations are uh, it is so unsuitable when the scope of enquiry is very wide uh, it is also very expensive and time consuming and also this method is subjected to personal bias it may lead to false conclusion the success of this method depends on the training impo imparted to the enumerators secondary data are not originally collected but collected from either published sources or unpublished sources first one published sources in this published sources the official publication of the central and state governments such as the reports and publications of central statistical organization national sample survey organization that is agriculture statistics of india etc publication of research institutions such as publication of indian agriculture research national council for educational research tra and training council of scientific and industrial research etc international publication uh, such as international monetary fund international labor organization international finance corporations etc professional bodies such as chamber of commerce indian medical council the cost and works accountant of india chartered accountant of india etc publish reports of their own field publication of economic and trade journals uh, like uh, capital commerce rbi bulletin journal of agriculture economics etc reports of various committees and commissions uh, they are um, mandal commission report pay commission report university grants commission report land reforms committee reports etc next one unpublished sources unpublished sources means the records of some government and private institutions are not published for various reasons such unpublished data may be furnished on request next we will see that precautions in the use of secondary data since secondary data are collected by somebody for some other purpose the scrutiny of secondary data is essential before using it while using secondary data the user should take into account the following consideration that is the suitability of data the investigator must see that the data are suitable for the purpose of the inquiry adic next one adequacy of data adequacy of the data is to be judged in the light of requirement of the survey and geographical area covered by the available data 
third one accuracy of the data the accuracy of conclusions drawn depends mainly on the accuracy of the collected data therefore the investigator must see whether the secondary data are accurate or not fourth one reliability of data the reliability of available data should be determined after satisfied with the sample is representative the investigators are properly trained data are carefully edited and the desired degree of accuracy is achieved now we are very clearly know the methods of collecting data collection of data is not an easy task because the universe from which data have to be collected may consists of a number of characters 